All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this bi-weekly update. And the date today is the 19th of January. Anybody here surprised that it's the 19th of January already? We're, we're over halfway through the month of January, which for us up north means we're mostly through winter because we've got no snow here. It's been, you know, 45 degrees yesterday, 40 degrees. I hear some people in the south have been getting snow. What's up with that? Anyway, I just wanted to welcome you. We, we look forward to uh, having you today. Some great jokes, some great um, information, some great gifts. We appreciate that. A lot going on. You know, the Omicron virus is reaching its peak like we hadn't seen before. Some people think it's going to you know, peak now, some in a few weeks. What I know is I have no idea, and most people who are guessing have no idea as well. So as we go through, we just want to be prepared for whatever does happen and, and adapt. Um, today, what I'm going to do is go through some housekeeping. We're going to have Mike get on for some of the portfolio. We're going to have Zach talk about some of the markets, Ken talk about planning as normal. Um, there's a lot of great stuff, so we'll get right to it. So let me first hop over to Peter for the important stuff. Peter, what's going on today that everybody should know? Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who came yesterday for our first January birthday club lunch. It was a very fun hour or so that we got to spend together. Next up on Monday, January 24th is National Compliment Day. So make sure whoever you're chatting with, maybe you throw an extra compliment or two out. Then on Wednesday, January 26th is the next Ladies and Gentian event. And that happens to fall on National Green Juice Day. So make sure you register for that if you're interested in joining. On Monday, January 31st, we're gonna have a recalibration of the virtual book club that we did at the end of 2021 for the book, Love Your Enemies. So you'll see links to register for that. And please feel free to join us even if you weren't able to make any of the other book club meetings. Monday the 31st also happens to be Julie Decent's birthday. So if you see her, talk to her, email with her, make sure you wish her a very happy birthday. On Wednesday, February 9th is going to be our virtual winter forum. That will happen at 10 a.m. that Wednesday. Again, in our weekly uh, updates that get sent out, there will be a link to register for that as well. And then finally on February 16th, will be the February birthday lunch club. So look out for that in the next bulletin as well. Um, that's it for me, so I'll send it back to Chris. Thank you, Peter, I appreciate that. Uh, so I was one of the January birthdays. That's why we're only having the January birthday club, um, just cause it was my birthday, that's it. I'm joking, we'll be having one each month. So watch your news, stay tuned, stay glued to it as well. So for my birthday, it was kind of interesting. My daughters bought me a really cheap dictionary, a really cheap dictionary for my birthday. I couldn't find the words to thank them. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. At any rate, so on a more serious note, as we go through here, I just wanted to touch base with each one of you today because I think it's a, what's going on is the market may be in pause. We're starting to see a lot of people have some questions and trepidations. I've had a couple of questions about, should I be selling because the market's so high? So a lot of that going on, we understand. We get it. Um, we're here. We're in it as well. So today we want to share a lot of the, you know, the inflation com conversation, some of the new potential tax laws that aren't happening, actually. Um, we can go pour deeply into all the possibilities. I joke, you know, we don't do that. But these are the things we've been studying this week. A lot of things that may not happen, but they might. So we're prepared for them. Um, also, we got a lot of great facts today as well. But I think as we're looking at some of the main pieces that I see, let me, let me start with kind of a focus or a theme today. My theme today, I just want to make it super simple. I want to call it um, rebalance. And so rebalance, what is rebalancing? So we talked about rethinking last week. So maybe this is the month of re, but rebalance. So in your life, do you ever get too um, into something like maybe too into running or too into eating or too into watching TV? And you just need to get yourself back into balance. Sometimes that happens in portfolios. We watch stocks too much. We watch, you know, um, too much of television and too much of this, and we're, we're talking about inflation too much or too much in politics or too much about the you know, um, coronavirus or whichever. Really, I think it's a time for a balance. It's a good chance for us to refocus on what's important and bring ourselves back into balance. Not that what you're doing isn't important, but the balance of your life is extremely important. And it, and it goes into something we have, which is a, a long time adage too for what we do. We rebalance your portfolios, right? Things get too heavy in one direction. What do we do? We snip some of that off and buy something that hasn't done as well. So rebalancing pertains not just to portfolios, 
not just to, to you know, what you're looking at for investments, but to life, the more important things that your portfolio support. So I think that's one of the things we've talked a little bit about. And I think if you've heard any of the stuff we, we've talked about lately or will be talking about, uh, I'm a rebound, I'm, a, I'm an asset allocator. What does an asset allocator mean? We made a, well, what assets do I have to, to reallocate? Time, energy, attention, money. These are different things you have to allocate. People say, well, time. I would contend that right now, the most valuable asset each one of you have who are on this, who can hear me, is time. Where to spend it, how much you have left, we don't know, but we wanna make sure we maximize it. So each day, we wanna make sure we're looking at the things that we wanna do, that make us happy. We can do if we, if we aren't available. So the energy and attention is another one as well. So as we look at this, we talk a lot about resources here. It's what we do and how we met, but we wanna make sure we understand that these resources, your money is here to support the most important things as well. That's the live it portion of our program. Remember, Gentian is plan it, live it, and give it. We wanna make sure we address all three. But in rebalancing, I thought that was a good point for me as well as others to say, what areas have gotten too big in your life? What areas have become overgrown? And what areas should we step back? What areas should we reinvest in? Maybe it's healthy eating, maybe it's praying. Maybe it's family members, maybe it's some other focus, but to me, I think that rebalance theme is a great one as we're heading into 2022. So I just wanted to, to bring some of that up. There's a few other things I'll talk about too as we go through here, but right now, I wanna take it over to um, Zach and talk a little bit about, Zach, what's happened in the markets? And more importantly, tell us exactly what's gonna happen over the next 12 months. Exactly right. Markets are going to go up, then they're going to go down, then up again, and then down, and then people are going to say that it's going to do a certain thing and be wrong. But no, I appreciate that, Chris, and that, that really tied into my go big for today as well, which is um, identify the bad habits and replace with a good habit, right? So we all have those good habits that we list out every year, but how often do we track those and follow those? Whereas if we can identify one potentially bad habit or one area that we're overweight in, like you mentioned, what can we do? What steps can we take to replace that with a good one. Uh, but if we're looking at markets here, we'll just go each year, each webinar last year, we kind of went through just year to date numbers. We'll do something similar again for 2022. Um, but remember as off of these numbers, 2021 was an incredible year market return wise. So, um, but S&P 500 currently down for the year, uh, right around 4%, 3.97, which is about 4.6 off of highs from the first week of January. Uh, Mike, who's gonna be sharing with us today as well, has some incredible volatility numbers explaining those. Uh, but from M MFS by the numbers, uh, we look back since 1926, 84% of rolling three year periods since then, since 1926 have produced a positive return. So the three year time frame really changed the perspective of markets and its volatility. Uh, the Dow Jones, right around two and a half percent, 2.67%. Down on the year, 3.9% off of highs, just like the S&P 500 from earlier in January of this year. The NASDAQ, we've seen a little bit larger correction as that one, as you remember, is about 50% weighted in technology. And that one is down 7.27% on the year or right around 10% off of its highs from early November of last year. Uh, so about a 10% correction in the NASDAQ. Now the Russell 2000, but if you remember is uh, small cap and mid-sized companies, 6.64% uh, on the year, which is about 14.2 off of highs from November of 2021 as well. And we're still seeing the disparity between small cap growth and small cap value. Um, growth down 11.16 on the year and value 2.09. And on the one year, even more significant, small cap growth is a temporary correction of about 15%, whereas the one year on small cap value is up 14.71. So really almost a 29% difference between those two, which is also the beauty of rebalancing and owning both of the asset classes. Um, on the emerging market side, we've actually seen a positive return on the year. That's something that we weren't able to say for quite some time in 2021, but up 0.74 or about a 4% increase just in the last two weeks. Um, on the fixed income side, one thing that Mike found from one of our experts in the on the portfolio management side as well, found that pre-pandemic early in 2020, 3.6 trillion in cash, we're at 4.7 trillion now, which someone mentioned that people are going broke silently, right? If we hear about all the inflation numbers, inflation's at 7% and our savings account, we're getting 0 0.01, 0 0.05 maybe. Uh, so about a 6% differential with cash sitting on the sidelines. 
Uh, but just on the fixed income yield size on the treasury, the one year 0.53%, uh, the, the five year 1.55, the 10 year 1.47 and the 30 year 2.12. And just since uh, the beginning of December about a 0.4% increase kind of across the board between all of those years. Um, but rates are still historically low as, as we know and, and can see. We're not really greatly rewarded for taking on extra risk for yield. Um, so really looking still at shorter duration bonds in some form. Um, just wanted to share a couple of really interesting facts for you guys real quick before we pass it back to Chris and Ken and Mike. Um, but the consumer price index for inflation was up 7% in 2021, which was the highest since 1981. But what was also really interesting when we looked at it, the average hourly earnings of employees in the private sector rose by 4.7% in 2021, off of a 5.5% increase in 2020. So the two-year average of employee wage gain of 5.1% was double of the previous 13 years. So at least the wages are increasing with some of that inflation as well. On the tax side, one thing that is always really interesting, we always hear different things of who pays the different taxes. And uh, MFS brought us these numbers that said that the top 10% of US tax payers making around 155,000 adjusted gross income received 47% of the adjusted gross income nationwide and paid 71% of all federal income tax. The bottom 90% or making less than about 155,000 adjusted gross income received 53% of total adjusted gross income and paid 29% of federal income tax for the years 2019. So we just like to take a look at those numbers, add a little perspective. And um, Chris always shares technology with us too. So a non-market fact is that uh, some of you have might've seen that the University of Maryland Medical Center successfully transplanted a pig heart into a human. The recipient was a 57 year old man is doing well. So Chris has been bringing some of those ideas to us for many years now through Abundance 360 and it's incredible when we hear about those coming to fruition. With that, I'll pass it back to Christopher Doty. I was just waiting for those words, Zach. So, hey, uh, one thing you'll want to find out as well in perspective, I know there's a lot of stats, Zach, to which and maybe they don't all stick, but I want to show you and uh, tell you something. This came from Jason Goffert. He's the chief research um, officer at Sundial Capital Corporation. But roughly four in every 10 companies on the NASDAQ composite index have seen their market values cut in half from their 52-week highs. Think about that. That is the majority, that's almost half of the stocks in the NASDAQ are not just in a bear market, which is 20%, but seen half of their value cut. Now, let me put this another way. Another way of thinking about it is the tech wreck. So at another point since the bursting of the dot-com bubble have so many companies fallen like this while the index itself was close to a peak. It doesn't mean anything, but you just wanna say here sometimes, this is what we look at it for perspective. So it's another piece that I thought was, was quite a good, uh, quite a good piece as well. So why don't we uh, take it over to Mike real quick here and see, Mike, what do you have going on? What have we done in research lately that we should share? Absolutely, thanks, Chris. And uh, to kind of build off of what you just said, something that we do hear from our providers and their uh, representatives is that sometimes underneath the market itself, when the market continues to go up, but there's these corrections within the market, that's a good indicator of being in a bull market. Um, the money isn't coming out, it's just going to different places. So that's what's kind of creating that in certain circumstances. But um, we've been fortunate to start wrapping up meetings again, or uh, ramping up meetings again this year. Uh, had a few of them last week. And what our representatives that uh, we've been speaking with have kind of all agreed upon is that the market is gonna be very volatile coming up here. And this kind of all hinges on what the Federal Reserve is gonna decide to do um, based on the inflation numbers and the, what they want to want to do with interest rates. Um, but so what does that actually mean? Well, in 2021, uh, the most recent year, uh, there were only seven trading days that the S&P 500 was up or down 2%, which is pretty low. In the last 20 years, it's been about an average of 19 trading days up and down 2% or more. Um, and to put that into even more perspective, in 2020, there were 44 days of it being up and down. 25 were down and 19 were up. So we don't know exactly how much to expect as far as volatility is concerned going forward, but it will be more um, as we await what the Fed decides to do. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Um, so a couple of things uh, as we see here as well. Ken, why don't you bring us some of what's going on with planning? 
some of the ideas that you think that uh, we've been talking about or that the clients have been bringing up to us we share. Absolutely. Yeah, great to be here with everybody. And uh, so my go big, I had to do this. My son wanted me to do this one, so I'm going to do it. He was, he found the Gentian, uh, the Gentian YouTube channel. <laughs> and he's like, Dan, are you a YouTuber? I said, no, nah, I'm not a YouTuber at all, but we're on YouTube. So if there, there's a channel out there. So if you ever want to check us out on Gentian YouTube, maybe a little plug for Gentian there. But uh, he wanted me to mention all the names. So mommy, Adriana, Parker, Isabella, and Asher, this one's for you today. I know sometimes you go on there and you actually gave us a like. My son, Parker, who's eight, gave us a like on the Gentian YouTube channel. So I appreciate that. So I wanted to give a little shout out to the family there and grateful for them as well. So what are we, he what are we hearing? What are we seeing? A couple of things. Uh, some of you like to calculate your RMDs, your required minimum distributions. You, you know the, the old uniform life expectancy table. Uh, you're aware of these things. You sometimes call us and say, hey, by the way, my RMD is this this year. And that's very impressive if you can do that. What, what happened was the IRS threw us a, a curveball this year. So it's been in the works for a couple of years. We've talked about it, but there's actually a new life expectancy table. How nice of them to put a life expectancy on us, right? But for IRAs, traditional IRAs, where we need to get money out after the age of 72, there's a new calculation. There's a new life expectancy table. So there's going to be a little bit of a difference between maybe what you've calculated on your own using the old life expectancy tables versus what we're seeing right now with the new life expectancy table. So again, let's just, let's just confirm those together, make sure we're getting the right amount of money out, of course. Uh, also, what we're seeing here, a lot of you own bond mutual funds. So, but some of you inherited some individual bonds from either maybe maybe mom or dad or something like that, or or you you've had individual bonds along the way. A lot of those are being called right now because those were issued at four and five percent. Well, a lot of you know that the interest rates in the interest rates on bonds are not four and five percent anymore. They're much lower than that. So, what are companies doing? And what are uh, organizations and revenue bonds, what are they doing? They're calling back their bonds because they can reissue them at a lower rate. So uh, we're aware of those. We get notifications. We try to reach out to you to talk to you about what the options are after those bonds are called. So we're actually seeing that. That doesn't pertain to a lot of you, but it does pertain to some of you there. The other one I want to go through is some of you are in a position to, to really make a difference this year and, and sock more money away. So what I want to do right now is I just want to share my screen with a few charts uh, from from our, our great coach, Ed Slott, is an IRA and tax guru. All I wanted to show you is just really what, what has stayed the same and what is changing. For those looking to sock away a few more dollars into your retirement accounts, what we're seeing here is individual IRA accounts, as you can see right here. It's based upon deductibility and based, based upon your household income. Um, so there is a phase out period where uh, deductibility of a traditional IRA is no longer. Uh, because of the phase out situation there. But in 401k plans that you can see on the top right here, as I have highlighted there, we've actually seen a little bit of an increase. So last year, 19,500 for 50 and below. Now it's 20,500, so an extra thousand bucks. The catch up is the same if you're 50 and older, um, it's $6,500. So you can stick away $27,000 of your own hard earned money into your 401k. 403B. That has nothing to do with the employer match. Sometimes that gets confusing there as well. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the the Roth IRAs down here, again, there's income limits. It's uh, 6,000 for 50 and under, and 7,000 for 50 and older. Those haven't those haven't changed at all. But there are phase out periods as well on that. So I just want to bring that to your your attention. Uh, speaking of life expectancy tables, I just want to share one more with you before I hand it over to Chris. And really what it is, if I can uh, do this here, give me one second while I fumble around. Here we go. I think I'm going to be able to do this here. And here is the inherited IRA. Now, this is the SECURE Act, and that changed everything for when you inherit, inherit an IRA after 2019. So 2020 and going forward, the SECURE Act is kicked in. It's basically truncated the, the, the amount that we can spread our distributions over as far as the number of years go. It's really a 10-year rule in most cases. There are exceptions to the rules, but there are very, very different rules for different people. So again, one of the, the, the main things that we're seeing here is that there aren't any required minimum distributions for inherited IRAs after 2020. 
pre pre 2020, there still are. Those rules are much like required minimum distributions on your own IRA. Same thing for inherited IRAs. After 2020, it's different. It's a 10 year payout. There aren't uh, individual requirements each year. It's all about making sure the money comes out after, or I should say in the 10th year, okay? So that's a little bit of a confusion point there uh, as far as inherited IRAs at 2020 and after is really what that means. So just wanted to bring that to you guys' attention right there. With that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to Chris Doty. Thank you, Ken, I appreciate that. So uh, do you guys ever remember the game Hot Potato? Remember that hot potato? Well, there's a couple of different ways to look at that. It's kind of interesting. So have you played hot potato lately? I didn't hear any responses. I can, I can wait all day. No, I, I asked that question because it's interesting. So I, I, it's a fun little game as kids. You remember, you know, hot potato, hot potato, you throw it around and it was a great ball game. It was fun. What's interesting is we become adults. We still play hot potato. It's just not with a ball. And the difference is you might find a subject like coronavirus, you might something, something like vaccination, like politics. And here's what often happens. If I'm not feeling well, what do I wanna do with that emotional bundle? I wanna play hot potato and say, here you go, that's yours. How about these comments that are gonna incite madness in you to be able to take my anger and now it's yours. Here you go, that's hot potato. It's often done with issues. It's often done with how I'm feeling. I'm not feeling well. Remember I said you have time, energy, attention, and resources. How easy is it to dedicate your time when you don't have the energy to give the attention to somebody else? So I often say self-care is one of the most selfless things you can do. Let me state that again. Your own personal attention to yourself is one of the most selfless things you can do because you get the energy and the attention to give your time to somebody else. But here's what it comes with hot potato. I mean, here's what it is. Here's the issue. Whatever it is, here it's yours. That's what number one is. That's what it is. Now, typically it comes today in the news media like it's the end of the world. Some end of the world is coming. And they're going to pass that information on to somebody else. You've done it before. Other people have done it to you. And what happens to your emotions? It's like, oh, my gosh. It often happens in the market. Hey, Microsoft just bought Activision Blizzard. Oh, my gosh. Now, all of a sudden, you've got fear of missing out or what happens or what should I be doing? Um, and oftentimes you'll pass it off to somebody else and somebody will pass it to you. Be careful about that because their statement from this is we're all in trouble unless we act, unless we do something. Now, realistically, when you play hot potato uh, is the best thing to get it and throw it because remember, if you drop that hot potato, what happens? You lose. So probably the best thing to do is to put on oven mitts. Hold the hot potato. Don't pass it on to somebody else. Wait till it cools. So I'd say before you take any action on the hot potato news of today, wait, take your time. But remember that kid's game. Don't just get it and throw it off to somebody else and spread that. Maybe absorb it. Take it yourself and say, that's probably not something worth passing on. So it's what we try to do here as well. There's a lot of information out there. Matter of fact, confirmation bias, the, the biggest single culprit of confirmation bias sits right here on this computer. It's not one of the people you've seen or are looking at, it's the internet. You, any opinion you look for, you can find there. So I say, when you play hot potato, play it differently. Let it come in, try not to let it come in, but when it comes in, hold it, let it cool, wait a day, and then decide if that's worth passing or not. Now, if you were a kid in grade school, people say, hey, you're not playing hot potato correctly, but remember, we're no longer in grade school. At least most of us aren't. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you um, as we go along. So one thing, um, you know, it was my birthday and it was kind of an interesting idea, but they just, uh, in our area here, they just opened up a new store. Did anybody see what that is? Yeah, the new store they opened is called Moderation. It has everything in it. Anyway, so I wanted to throw one more dad joke in there as well as, as we ended at this. But I think one of the keys is, as we get towards the end of this program today, there's, I, I've kind of skipped over some of the future loop. Peter Diamantis program was coming up uh, next, uh, it's two weeks from now, but they decided to move it to early April. So normally we're gonna have that conversation in February. We're gonna move that to April. So instead, next time I'm gonna bring you 10 of the topics. We went over a mini seminar of three to five, uh, three to five hours uh, about the mind blowing topics. I'll tell you, that was enough 
to get my mind spinning, but I'll share a couple of ideas with you as well. So there's this little group of thing called Agens, Swarm Drones. And right now, Agens Swarm uh, solar powered ag tech robots are also able to pull weeds. So you can actually do farming without people. Now, if you heard something last week as well, anybody know of a big green machine that reported something interesting last week? Oh yeah, I do. John Deere reported they are producing automated tractors require no driver. Matter of fact, there's not even a spot for a driver on them. This can revolutionize the industry, just like the plow did. John Deere was one of the revolutionaries in the plow, and I know some of you work there. So interesting piece you'll find coming up. A lot of 3D printing, a lot's going on with called material sciences. Material sciences are, how can we print cement to make walls for homes, to make houses much quicker and easier and less expensive to put up for people who don't have homes? Um, here's a case. You can now rent a robot worker for less than paying a human. Polar manufacturing has been making metal hinges and all, but now they're coming up with something big. They actually hired their first robot employee. So what I do say about what's, what's going on right now, you've heard a lack of human capital. There's not enough people for the jobs. What does that mean? What does that implications might that have? Well, today we have robots and we have artificial intelligence. What we're going to see is more and more robots produced, if you will, and you're going to see them replacing positions humans were in, and not to eliminate humans, but the fact that we can't find the humans to do the job. We're seeing that we're going to find humans jobs that need humans and not robotic jobs like watching bottles spin or, you know, loading up a box or loading up crates. Those are not human. It doesn't require the human aspects that we have. Care, empathy, all the right brain activities that we have are going to be much more important. So to your grandkids and kids or any of you looking for new jobs, <laughs> I'm joking because I know you're retired, but to any of you guys who are, take a look at the right side of the equation. The right side of the equation is your right brain. It's about the orchestration. It's about the arts, masters in fine arts. How do you take all this information coming in? Which, by the way, if I go through everything that's in the future loop today or tomorrow or the next day or the previous day, it becomes mind numbing. In about half the presentation that Peter Diamandis made, we took a break at about halfway through. And it's mind numbing again because we're seeing where everything is. Oh my gosh, you may never have to plug things in again. You can get electricity without having a plug. You have sensors now. There's like a quadrillion sensors on one chip they printed versus just a billion from NVIDIA, who's one of the fastest chip makers now. I mean, it's becoming almost incomprehensible to the human brain at which the speed is expanding. The mushroom cloud was growing. Once it gets to be so big, it's almost impossible to understand. They now can model, for instance, the human, the, the core of the earth. And I'll just give you one or two more of these. The core of the earth um, is going to be cooling, they think, faster than uh, they expect. Oh my gosh, that's a problem. Over the next 100 million or 100 billion years, it could be a problem. But it's what they believe made Mars what Mars is, kind of a desert wasteland. So if you're planning way down the road, that may be important. But there's a hot potato thrown out today. We really don't have to do a whole lot with. It's interesting to know, but we need to operate more with things that are today. One more thing I thought that was really cool before I leave you with this, wearable sensors. So they've got wearable sensors. If any of you have, um, you've probably seen this before, but Abbott makes these wearable sensors called Freestyle Libre. They actually will monitor your glucose, monitor what most people who have diabetes have to prick their fingers so eight to 10 times a day for, simply by putting on the back of your arm and running your phone over it. It's a continuous glucose monitoring. Um, I've done it as well for some fitness things. It's very cool to see what causes spikes, but things like this are happening on a consistent basis. There's so many theoretical ideas. My question for you and for me is, when are they real? When can we do something about them? When might our portfolios may, uh, or, or our lives be better by these? So that's the questions that we look for. Uh, I know that's an awful lot to come with technology. There's lots more. Sometimes there's so much, I can't really fit it in with other things that we talk about as well. But like I say today, today is a day of rebalance. That's really our theme. How can we take things that we've gone a little too far into, maybe trim those and put a little more effort in things we probably should to be balanced. Remember, a car has four tires for a reason. If one of them is flat, how does it run? Not very well. So look for balance in that as well. And then remember, when playing hot potato, be the one who just holds it. Those are two things that I have as well. Now, one last thing as I leave, this is kind of nice. One of my clients uh, left this with me the other day, and I read this to our team, but it's it's a poem called Giving Thanks. I think uh, Rick and Kay, you know, I think you gave this to me. The author is unknown, but it's an inspirational one. So here it is. It's called Be Thankful. And the author is unknown. So we, we can give credit to somebody who's unknown. 
Be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there be to look forward to? Be thankful you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for difficult times. During those times, you grow. Be thankful for your limitations because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge because it will build your strength and character. Be thankful for your mistake. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are thankful for the setbacks. Gratitude can turn negative into a positive. Find a way to be thankful for your troubles as they become your blessings. So my go big is sharing the poem with you. I wanted to share my go big at the end. I know we often do this at the beginning, but this is a great poem. I appreciate the sharing. It struck home with me. You're finding that most of our greatest learning, most of our great thank gratefulness is, is talked about good things. I wanna be grateful for the setbacks, the things that have taught us to be who we are, things that have made us who we are. So gratitude doesn't just go in one direction, it can go in all directions. With that, here at Gentian, helping you plan it, live it, and give it, this is Chris Doty signing off today. We appreciate your gratitude. Continue to go out there and stay safe and be as positive as you possibly can. With that, thank you for your time. Have a great week or two.